Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk Ray Bradbury. If you've not subscribed to our channel, please do so. A couple of days ago, I did announce that I am going back for another round of Let's Talk Ray Bradbury. Uh, this time we have a hundred more short stories from this collection, The Stories of Ray Bradbury. And uh, we're going to kick things off today with a story called The Night from 1946. I should also add that um, starting off here, uh, I may not be too consistent with these reviews because I do have uh, some other projects I need to finish up so that will um, sort of be intermingled together for a little while. Uh, but for today, The Night by Ray Bradbury, 1946. In this short story that kicks off this collection, uh, Bradbury puts the reader in the point of view of a child, as if you're seeing this through, your eyes are seeing the events. It's a hot summer night, uh, it's bedtime, um, he's, this child has just had ice cream, um, and mother decides uh, that your brother's come home too late, or is hasn't come home yet. Uh, you need to get your clothes back on and go out looking for them. So um, they go out alone because father's across town at a lodge meeting. Um, hand in hand with your mother, you approach uh, this place called the Ravine, um, which is a place of terror. Uh, you're a child, but you've known death already. Um, your death of your grandfather, the death of your little sister in her crib a few years earlier, um, a cousin from, from the next town over. And the ravine sort of uh, makes you remember this and feel this and you're sort of a terror of the possibility of death and the night. Um, you, you're alone. Um, you, you hope that your mother can protect you, that she is a source of comfort, but uh, you do know that you're alone. Um, the government can't help you. The police can't help you. Um, this is a place of, uh, of, of solitude. Um, Anything bad that's going to happen to you uh, will be done before help can come to you, if help comes at all. Um, so it makes you feel a sense of um, the need for um, self-sufficiency, I guess. Uh, but um, there's, a there's a malevolence here. Um, even the crickets have seemed to stop chirping. Um, but just then, um, your mother's calls are finally answered as Skip, uh, your big brother, and uh, his friends come uh, Skipping down the uh, down the path, I'm um, okay, and um, uh, he's probably in for whipping, but probably not uh, <laughs> uh, because mom's um, an old softy. <laughs> and you do get home uh, safely from your adventure in the night out to the ravine. Uh, so I, I love that Bradbury makes you the character of the um, of the story. It just feels like a a really good um, choice of story to kick off. Uh, this collection because it sort of puts you into that mood and sort of that that point of view um because Bradbury's always had a childlike sort of uh, view of things I feel like um he, so often um he's it's nostalgic for childhood but it's um you know these stories aren't necessarily made for children but it puts adults sort of back where they were when when these sort of experiences were new things and um you were just coming to um, to learn the realizations of of death and danger and also controlling one's fear in life. So it very much is that type of story. Um, the Ravine, now he's used this device in other stories that I've read. I think um, the main one that comes to mind is um, I think the whole town was sleeping where the three girls go out to a movie and they stop for a soda afterwards and one by one they drop each out off at their home and there's uh, this feeling that they're being stalked and fi the final girl does get home and there is somebody there. Um, so I, I do like the, the ravine as this sort of um, device. Um, wasn't it um, Stephen King's It had, was it the Barons? Was, it, was, it, was, it, was that what that area was called? Um, this is not a altogether um, uh, original device. I think there's places of terror throughout um throughout literature and history and mythology um but i like that um this place it really fits the bradbury sort of model and the bradbury aesthetic and sort of um you know terror in small town middle america type um type vibe so i really do like um his use of the ravine here and um you know, really, this is about childhood. Um, it's about coming to grips with all these things, controlling your terror, and um, you know, this time the the fear of the dark 
uh, was unfounded, but sometimes there really is a monster in the darkness, and I'm sure we're going to see um, plenty of them in these stories coming up. All right, guys, The Night by Ray Bradbury, first published in 1946, kicks off our exploration of the stories of Ray Bradbury. Looking forward to getting into this. Um, as I pointed out up top, I do have some other projects to finish up. Um, still working on Clive Barker, so we'll get back to that. I also have, um, I'd like to get into Lord Dunsany, some of his fantasy, which greatly inspired Tolkien and um, Lovecraft. Um, the King in Yellow, um, also an inspiration to Lovecraft. And uh, we have some Lovecraft too, um, in the form of the ancient track, his collected poetry. So uh, lots of interesting things coming up for you here on Let's Talk. Uh, please subscribe. Until next time, keep it creepy.